Hey everybody, it's Katie from Bobby Hair Studio and I'm gonna get right down to it with this video. This is a very quick balayage I did for my client who used to have a super blonde balayage and then about eight months ago she wanted to follow the trends and do something more natural and now since spring is coming she wants to go lighter again. Let's start with my setup today. I have a foiling board brought to you by Framar, as well as the Big Papa Foils. These are huge foils. They're amazing for any hand painting, balayage, or big foiling work that you're gonna do. And I also have two bowls of lightener. In my light bowl, this is for the ends. I have half clay and half blonde me in seven vol. And in the dark bowl, I have blonde me lightener in 20 volume, because that needs to lift all the way. And something that's amazing here is Framer has given me an affiliate code for you guys. So this code is good until the end of March. So make sure to use this if you want to get discounts on Framer stuff. So some of you might be wondering why her hair is wet. We did use a K-18 treatment in her hair to keep her hair as healthy as possible because we're lifting over pre-lifted ends. She used to be super blonde and her hair is naturally super crazy dry. It's one of the driest hair textures I've ever worked with. So we do need to make sure that we're protecting the hair by using K-18 and making sure that those ends are going to still lift up to like a level nine without snapping off. I've sectioned her hair way below the apex because this is how I'm going to be doing my back section is I want it to be a little bit further downward so that my side sections include all the length of the parting. What I'm starting with is I'm taking a big section and I'm back combing it a ton and I'm going to be using my 20 volume mixture which is my dark bowl and it's I've made it the dark bowl because it's the color of the dark hair and the light bowl is for the color of the light hair. And what I'm doing is I'm blending those, those two formulas into each other using the paddle brush, and sorry, the paddle and all of the brushes. And then I'm going to just very gently insulate it with a foil. I'm not wrapping it up tight. I just wanna make sure that this stuff doesn't really dry out too fast. Now my clay formulation is a little bit thicker and it's with a lower volume developer so that I don't damage those ends because they have been pre-lifted. We're trying to like lift an old toner out of them essentially. And this is a very fast application for foiling. I've only doubled the speed here just for time sense for you guys, but essentially it took me 40 minutes to apply the entire head. And then she had to sit for a while because this client's hair does take a long time to lift, even though she's naturally like a level seven. We're only really lifting her two levels, but her hair is very stubborn, very dry, very coarse. It's one of the more difficult textures to work with, but she also has a lot of orange pigments underneath of her hair. It's kind of an, kind of an anomaly for this like light natural color. You would expect it to lift easily, but there are a couple of clients who have this kind of difficult stubborn hair that will, will not want to lift that easily despite its natural light color. I'm showing you guys the entire foiling pattern for the back and the side that I did today so you can see where I've left my shadows and where I'm applying my highlights here. So with some of these pieces, I just kind of want to leave some depth and contrast because when you're going from a level seven to a level nine, you still want it to be PC enough that you can tell the difference between the level seven and the level nine. Otherwise, you're just gonna have one kind of big mush of level eight everywhere. So we do want some contrast, so we're taking large enough pieces that if we back comb them, they'll be really, really soft but still there'll be a statement because of how large they are. And I've dropped the middle out of this last piece because I just wanted the sides to be lifted up. This is one of the only pieces that I do this to, and it's important to do this kind of in the center of the back so you don't accidentally put way too much blonde in that weird area that opens up when their parting opens, and then suddenly there's just a huge chunk of blonde. You definitely don't want that. You also don't want a huge chunk of dark either. But that's why I really like these back combing balayages. Her hair is amazing for this because it practically back combs itself. And then you're not left with that much hair in the paddle here. You're kind of just saturating it and flicking the brush up to give like these soft little baby lights that blend right up towards the root. However, we're not trying to get right up to the root for anywhere except for the money piece, which I'll be showing you guys a little bit later on how I did that. One of the key things to keep in mind when you are doing hand painting is to always lift the sections and check underneath to make sure that they are also blended because if you do have larger sections that don't have the lightener penetrate all the way through from the top to the bottom of the section that you're going to need to make sure that you have that soft blending underneath as well because otherwise they will swish their hair around and you'll see blocks where the lightener hasn't quite, you know, 
blended out very much. Maybe because on your paddle board, the edges of it touch the hair. Either way, make sure you get the top and the bottom and make sure to saturate as much as possible with a 20 volume in the areas that haven't been lifted before and try not to get the 20 volume onto the ends too much. That's where the seven volume lightener comes into play because it's so much more gentler. It's mixed with a clay lightener, which is much slower and a much gentler lift as well. And you can see really quickly that these ends do just kind of brighten right back up. So I'm glad I didn't use a 20 volume on them. So I'm just gonna show you the one side because the sides are basically identical how I apply them. I'm taking a large diagonal forward piece here so that I can get like a bright halo look around the face. And then at the very top, I am going to be doing a hand painted money piece with no back combing. That's gonna bring it right up to the top. She does want that like that impact of the blonde around her face, but she still wants the lower maintenance look of having a more dropped balayage around the rest of her parting line. Underpainting is so key when you're working around the face because you could paint on top of the section that you're painting and that's actually facing towards the ear and the back of the head. So that's why you see me paying so much attention to around the face, the underpainting, because that's what's around her face, the underside of this foil. Now, I don't like to press my foils in or anything along the pieces very much. I just very gently tap them so that I know that they're gonna stay where they are but not enough so that they're gonna adjust where the bleach is because I'm sweeping upwards with my bleach. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not actually pressing through at those top little blendy areas. And then, so what I like to do here is leave a decent amount out in between my foils, as I was saying earlier, again, for some of that contrast, because even though it's still around the face and we want still a lot of blonding, we're still trying to ensure that we have that soft contrast for when she curls her hair. You can see the difference between the level seven and the level nine area. What's also interesting is that you can also kind of see where the old toner has kind of faded out in the middle of the hair. No matter what, whenever you go from like a blonde to more of a natural color, unless you go for a crazy ashy color, which in my opinion just kind of looks green and muddy, you're gonna eventually end up with a slightly warmish hue to the hair. So if you're someone who doesn't like warm hues, don't go from light to dark, unless you're planning going like really dark and refreshing it constantly because that blonde wants to push out old toner and what's gonna stay in there is the warm tones that are in a toner because the warm tones are there to fill the hair to make sure that you don't end up with that muddy, ashy kind of look that actually doesn't really shine well on the skin. So right here is where I'm pulling out my money piece that's just gonna frame the top of her face. And you can see I'm doing no back combing. And I'm taking my Power Painter brush from Framar and I'm just sweeping everything upwards. I'm not applying the lightener directly to the area I need to blend out. I'm applying it first to an area a few inches down and then using the residue of the lightener that's on my brush to kind of sweep downwards and give this very soft feathered effect. Now, this is a pretty bold money piece. You do not have to take a piece that's this thick. The softer you want your money piece to be, you can back comb, you can take a smaller piece, you can put in a few foils and, and do that if your hair is a little bit darker and you still want that same level of lift. But with something like this, we wanted something really bold around the face and still to be soft when she pulls it back because of the natural level that she's already at. Again, lower contrast, she's still gonna have that amount of blonde that she wants to see in her hair without having a ton of crazy maintenance to keep up the roots. And as you guys know for me, even when you're doing a clay lightener, make sure that you don't mix too much into your bowl at once. I did refresh my bowls a couple times here. I did cut those parts out, but it's so, so important to know that, especially with a clay lightener, because they're not very powerful in the first place, that you do need to be maintaining the freshness of your bowls by mixing a new bowl every 15 minutes. So this is again an appointment that only took me about 40 minutes to apply the entire head and then she did have to sit for quite a while so we don't want that lightener to lose its potency because if she's sitting for quite a while as well those last pieces are going to take forever to lift up. They're usually the ones that are on the top and you don't want them to be orange. And if you have old bowls, you're basically guaranteeing that you're gonna have your last sections, which are the, always the ones on the very top, that they're gonna be orange. And they're the ones that rely on being fresh the most 
because you don't want to be sitting there as long as the other foils have been with those top foils. You want to kind of, you want to get your stuff done. You don't want to be working with half the power that you would normally be working with. So as I'm heading up towards the back here, because I'm using a diagonal forward section, I am kind of foiling towards the apex of the head. And the closer I get to the apex, the bigger my sections are. Because the bigger they are, the more I have to back comb and the further away from the roots I'm going to paint. This is going to give her that very soft teardrop effect that I do in a lot of my videos. And you'll see it in the bowl too. I actually kind of fan her hair out and it's one of my favorite shots ever. It's going to be so cool. I can't wait for you guys to see it. But this allows for a softer root so that her, her parting doesn't like open up and reveal like a black hole. Like she's very, very soft, shiny roots and the blonde just kind of very softly melts down into the hair. I love it. Now that we're working on the last piece on the left side, we want to make sure that this piece is very thin and very gently applied to because we don't want to overdo it with the blonde on this back piece especially when we're going for a low maintenance look we don't want a big blonde block so make sure you take a very small and a thinner piece for your last sections because number one a thinner section will lift faster especially with difficult to lift hair like this and blending up into a very very back combed piece will allow for an even softer root melt and that's important around where the hair likes to split open and part into that big whirl that everybody has in the back of their heads. So the lower you go down, the softer the result will be. The higher you go up, the more bold the result will be. So I'm taking a check on my foils and the back ones have lifted and they're almost there, but I can still see a little bit of yellow under there. Remember that lightener is deceiving. It makes things look brighter than they really are. This is how many foils are in her head. You can already see the money pieces are lifting beautifully. Still a bit of yellow in there though. We want to make sure we push past that yellow that you can still see when there's lightener on the hair. We want it to almost look blue white because then we, then we know it's lifted at a level nine. This is what the hair looks like when it's pulled out of the foils, except for the last two on the right side. I did want to give them a few more minutes, but like, look at that. That is crazy looking. And when the hair is rinsed out and starting to detangle, you can see the money piece is still very soft up at the root because the hand painting, but it's still super bold, which is what I love about hand painting. So I'm about to detangle this, but you can already see the contrast in the hair here, which is so, so beautiful to me. I love to see that there's a clear level seven and a clear level nine. And when I detangle this, it's going to soften the whole look completely. So this is an important thing to take note of is how much contrast you see even before you do your detangling. Now that she's detangled, here's a little preview of how her hair would look if she were to put it up. It's very blonde, it's very soft, it's super cute. And we have a nice even lift from roots to ends. The ends are still a little on the warm side, but then I parted it out and you can see from her parting how beautiful and soft and subtle this is going to look once it's toned. If you don't want as much of a money piece, you can always drop down a little bit of a shadow root too right in the front there. So my first formula today was a TBH-9-16, which is a ash chocolate and a six volume. And then it made the roots really, really white. And then I did a second toner in the ends because they were a little brassy. And I glazed with 8-11 and 8-46 and six volume. We did not like this. It was way too bright, way too ashy and almost like a white blonde. So how do you fix that? I'm going to show you right now. We glazed over that with a vibrance 7-55, which is a gold gold, and a 9-00, which honestly the zeros in the Schwarzkopf line are quite orangey. And so we needed to add that, that gold and that orange back into the hair and to level it down half a level. Then we glazed over it with the beige bonding mask, mostly because that beige bonding mask is so good at holding in toners and adding so much shine, which I absolutely love. So here is the end result. She is a lot blonder than she was before. I really wish it wasn't nighttime when we were able to take our final photos, but here it is. She's looking so much brighter. These are all in different areas of my salon that have different lighting. I want to show you guys the most versatile lighting I could. 
and she's refreshed and ready to go. What do you guys think of this video? Remember to leave your comments and thoughts in the comments below and to like and subscribe if you like this channel and want to see more tutorials from me. Thank you guys so much for joining me again today and I hope you have a lovely evening.